to see everybody. I am uh, very grateful that Janice uh, has been come speak. And of course, Steve's life for at least the last 20 years or so centered around Byron Elementary. And uh, I like to be thought of as the genius who hired him. But uh, truthfully, most of the folks in here would never have met Steve if it wasn't for his sister, Janice. Janice uh, worked with at the school with me. She was a bookkeeper. We had an opening for uh, a custodian. And she said, uh, I'd like you to meet my brother. He's a big, strong fella. He's a hard worker. He's honest. And I think you'll like him. She says, now, he's a little bit different. And I said, oh, he's a Democrat. <laughs> said, no, no, not, not that kind of different. But just, just take a chance with it. And I don't know if you've ever been that way where you meet somebody for the very first time and you just know you're clippy. I've done that a few, a few times in my life, and this was one special one when I met Steve because I just said, this guy is going to be good for our school. Custodian is not a popular job. Custodian is a hard job. It's not a lot of fun, especially in the kindergarten hall. The kids get so sick and have troubles. But more importantly, the good people who can clean up, you need people who like children. Because uh, children go to that school with a lot of trust. And uh, it was obvious that Steve liked, liked children. And so over the years, uh, I got to know him really, really well. We spent uh, quite a bit of time outside of school. I, I had uh, gotten some horses along Linda Hutchison, and we bought a bunch of hay. And Steve was 6'1", 190 pounds in his prime. He was not a little fella. He was very strong. I just, those hay bales were 70 to 90 pounds each. So I asked him one Saturday, would he come help me? Help me. Now, I have to admit, if you're an IRS agent, I paid him under the table. <laughs> and uh, he came and helped me, and I realized, that's this guy, as strong as a bull. And all the time I never, I knew him, he never once said, I'm tired, I gotta sit down. If anything, he would just go sit down because he's surely exhausted. Just a just a, a, a real strong, strong fellow. So I've got a few things I'm gonna read that uh, Debbie White and I collected from uh, different members of the faculty over the years. Uh, it steals all my thunder. Everything they've written here says everything I feel about him and, and so much more. This is from uh, Debbie White. Mr. Steve was one of the purest people I have ever met. His affection and love for people was, a, was so apparent 25 years ago when our daughter began kindergarten in PES. And, and it was as affectionate as it was the last time I saw him a few weeks ago. Upon meeting him in the hallway, lunchroom, or office, his smile made you feel special. He enjoyed telling me a new tidbit about news every day at work, usually about some legendary person's classic. He loved even those he never met and seemed to be genuinely saddened by their death. He would sometimes sing us a little Elvis if we asked. On those warm, sunny days, I would see Mr. Steve sitting on a bench out in front of the school during lunch, enjoying the birds, sunshine, people passing by. He was a kind, gentle, peaceful person. Thank you, Debbie Dunbar White. And she postscript, Mr. Steve made a tremendous impact on the thousands of students and hundreds of staff members who passed through Byron Elementary during his career there. He will never be forgotten. And then I've got a short one from uh, Ms. Diane Brown, lead custodian. I met Mr. Steve at BES in 2003. Mr. Thompson was the principal, and he talked about Steve like a son. You know, he would always say, you, you got to love him. And as we worked together, he was loving and kind, uh, man to all. I got to know his mama very well. That's where he got his loving and kind heart from, his mama. I may not make it through all of these, but I won't try to. I got a, a real mama here from Cheryl Sawinski, who is real sweet and loving. Mr. Steve was one of the, if not the, most beloved persons who ever graced the halls of Byron Elementary School. He was loved by students, teachers, and faculty alike. Mr. Steve, as he came to be called, was kind, hardworking, and funny. Anyone that knew Mr. Steve knew he was the biggest Elvis fan there ever was. That's a tribute to <laughs> So 
Some of my best memories of Mr. Steve was when he would walk down the kindergarten hall and Mr. the kids would ask Mr. Steve to sing for him, for them. He always had a smile and a song to light up their day. Whether it was Hound Dog, Blue Suede Shoes, or any other Elvis song, he was ready to entertain us with his singing. Most of those students didn't even know who Elvis was, but they knew Mr. Steve, and he was a rock star to them. After I moved to the office, this is what Ms. Swinsky said, Mr. Steve would come by and keep me abreast of the news of the day. He knew all the big news. He knew world news, national news, Byron news. He kept up with all of it. He would especially enjoy telling me about the latest winning game during the Braves season. He loved the UGA Bulldogs. He kept me up to date on the presidential races. And during that 30 years, he went through a lot of presidential races. The latest several celebrity who got married or had passed. He kept me informed on it all. Another favorite memory is when Mr. Steve would take a few minutes at his lunch break and sit on the bench in front of the school with his face towards the heavens to soak up the sun. He'd look over me and say, it's a beautiful day. That was one of the best things about Steve. He enjoyed every day with a smile. He never complained about anything. He was ready to do anything you asked him, and he was happy to do it. He had a way of making everyone feel happy. The last time I saw Steve was a couple of weeks ago. He talked for a little while, and he even sang a song for me. As I was leaving and standing in the doorway, I looked at say bye once more. I told him I loved him and I blew him a kiss. I can still see him so clearly as he blew me a kiss and gave me that sweet, sweet smile. I shall always remember that moment. To sum it, sum it up, Mr. Steve was the kindest, most gentle soul. He loved everyone and everyone loved him. Two of my three children are in their 30s and one is almost there. When I told them Mr. Steve was ill, and later told them he passed, they were so sad. They remembered him with such fond memories. They, along with literally thousands of students that went through Byron Elementary School, they will always remember Mr. Steve. He made a difference in their lives. He let them know they were special. Who can ask for a more wonderful legacy than to know they were special in the eyes of a child? There, there is a poem that fits Mr. Steve to perfection. It goes like this. One hundred years from now, it won't matter what kind of car I drove, what kind of house I lived in, how much money I had in the bank, or what my clothes looked like. But the world made me a little better because I was important in the life of a child. So until I see you again, Steve, God rest I, for you are now with God and all your loved ones in heaven. We love you. We will never forget you. Hey, I just had a thought. I bet you're singing with Elvis right now. <laughs> That's from Cheryl Sawinski. I won't have a thing to say after reading these to you. My name is Missy McDaniel. I first met Mr. T when I was president of the BTO at Byron Elementary School in 2009. He always offered his help with any projects that we had going on never complained about the mess we sometimes made left after ice cream socials, pizza parties, movie nights, or the Santa shop. In 2012, I was hired as a bookkeeper at Byron Middle School, and I lost track of Mr. Steve. I was excited when he was transferred to Byron Middle last year, as were many of the kids who remembered him in Byron Elementary. Mr. Steve had the kindest and purest heart, and we were all better for knowing him. It was an honor to I've always counted on Mr. Steve to keep me up to date on anything newsworthy, like the passing of Penny Marshall. Of course, everyone remembers Penny Marshall. She played Laverne on the Laverne and Jill uh, Shirley Show. He always knew the score of the latest Falcon game and a good reason why they had not pulled out a win. He loved the Georgia Bulldogs and he always was thrilled when they won. And as much as he loved the Falcons and the Bulldogs, there was another team he loved a little more, and that was the Peach County Trojans. When he wasn't wearing his red and black, he proudly wore black and gold. Shortly after he transferred to Byron Middle, I gathered several t-shirts and green and white hoodie for him. Of course, he accepted them with gratitude, and he came back later and asked if he could exchange them for a black and gold hoodie. <laughs> Thank goodness we have an 
this. I tracked the high school and I was able to get him the latest Trojan apparel. I explained to him he could wear both green and white and black and gold and he supported the same team. I think he liked that a lot. I know without a doubt Mr. T is with our Lord and his health has been restored. I'm all so confident he has found Elvis in heaven and is enjoying one of the best concerts ever. This is from Carrie Hayes. I had the pleasure of working with Mr. Steve at Byron Elementary for 10 years. Mr. Steve was always dependable and rarely out. The students loved him and always enjoyed seeing what hat he was wearing that day. His NASCAR racing was one sharp looking hat. He also wore a good looking cowboy hat. He was quick to join in whatever songs he sung and could always tell the name of the song, the artist, and when it was written. I love seeing Mr. Steve at school and always count on him whistling, humming, or singing when he worked. This says a lot about Mr. Steve and the relationship he built with the students over all the years he worked with BES. He had a good relationship with students, current students, former students, and Mr. Steve was loved by all. This is from Walter Peavy. Walter teaches fifth grade. <coughs> Mr. Steve is a firing legend. I'm sure it's safe to say that hardly a person has been included in Byron Elementary School who in some way does or remember Mr. Steve. As an educator myself, I can tell you some things Mr. Steve taught me along the way. First, he taught me that life isn't all about me. Every day I see Mr. Steve would greet each other and I'd ask, how are you? His response would always be, how about you? It wasn't, if it wasn't Mr. Steve, he was always concerned about others. I think we all should be. Next, he taught me that others are more important than sports teams. Mr. Steve was an avid Georgia Bulldogs fan. Sometimes I'll catch him wearing a Georgia Tech hat or some other team, and it was usually that someone gave it to him. He'd quickly correct the problem the next day by wearing a Bulldog hat. He loved UGA love people more than we should. Lately, Mr. Steve, no, lastly, Mr. Steve taught me that regardless of life situations, regardless of how you feel, regardless of your emotions or anger, it is not necessary to complain. It's always possible to smile. I never once heard Mr. Steve complain about anything at all. I did, however, always see a huge smile anytime I would meet him in the hallway or anywhere around the school. I'm sure he had bad days, just like we all do, but Mr. Steve never showed it. He cared about others more than like we all should. If someone just needed to see what it means to all of us as Jesus loves, as they would need it to be, they should watch Mr. Steve for a short time. He was a living example. Mr. Steve left the world a legacy of loving and caring, and the world would be a better place type. 1 John 4, 7, 21. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been from God and known God. And he has given us this commandment. Anyone who loves God must also love his brother and love his sister. This is from Lori Scott. I believe that's a childhood friend. No, it's a cousin. A cousin? To Janice, family, and friends, I wish I could be there in person to share my memories with Steve. But I'm with you in spirit and in my heart. My favorite childhood memories are from Kingsbury Drive and all of us that live there in more paths between houses. Steve and his family were just a few houses down. So many summer days I, was, well, I spent at Steve's house then across the street to Rhonda and back to Steve. Steve would be sitting on the front steps most of the time. I'd walk by and see what he was doing. He would be laughing. He and his daddy were always laughing. Always many nights, I'd be in bed going to sleep, hearing Elvis, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Steve and daddy talking and laughing. Steve was a constant in our house, and I'm so grateful that he and our families were close. Steve will always be in my heart and memory. So happy Steve knew the Lord 
and I'll see him again in the rest of the family. I can imagine Daddy seeing Steve and introducing him to the angels at Methuselah. Steve smiling and laughing, saying, that's right, Elvis has left the building. Thank you, thank you very much, Methuselah.